So this video is all about the fear of being watched and paranoia and the compulsions we engage in as a reaction to that fear, that belief that we're being watched. I'm going to talk first about a bunch of the compulsions that I dealt with related to this. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you a funny story of actually being watched. So first up, going back to when I was struggling with mental illness, I always believed I was being watched. I had so many different compulsions in my apartment uh, related to the belief that somebody was watching me in my apartment. So I always thought there were people outside of the apartment and they were watching what I was doing and particularly around things that were valuable. So for example, if I had my wallet, I would always make sure that I somehow was hiding my wallet when I put it away or if I put it down anywhere, that it wasn't in a clear line of sight to a window because I really felt that somebody was outside of that window watching me. Or if I did put my wallet down, somewhere and then realized that I put it down and it was visible from a window. I might go over and put a book on top of it and then pick up the wallet underneath the book and then go in my room and then hide the book and the wallet in a drawer or something like that. I would often go back into the house because I had a whole bunch of different rituals and compulsions around different pieces of property that I thought were valuable. So I would hide them whenever I was leaving. Uh, so my laptop, for instance, was one of those. I would often hide my laptop under my bed and if I was then leaving and I realized I hadn't closed the curtains or something first, when I hid the laptop, I would then maybe turn off the lights and then close the curtains and make sure everything was really dark and then pull out my laptop and then, you know, for that day, find a different place to hide it. And then I might hide it somewhere and then I might decide, oh, that didn't feel safe enough. And that could actually start to take a lot of time if I decided that I didn't have a good hiding spot and somebody would know about it or thieves would break into the house and find it, I, I could spend a lot of time just trying to find the right hiding spot. Whenever I left my apartment, I would always leave and return from a different direction, which was just another compulsion. It was I was only doing it as a reaction to this belief that there were people watching me. And so if I came back a different way, maybe I'd catch them stealing, or if I left a different way, maybe they wouldn't notice I'd left, so they wouldn't rob the apartment because they wouldn't know if I was there or not. It wasn't only confined to home, if I was at the gym, for example, I would always pick a locker that was in the most remote spot in the gym because I didn't want anyone to be around because I assumed they would you know, maybe see me put my wallet in my locker or something like that and then they would rob my locker. So I would always, and I would be very aware of whether or not there were other people around. When I was putting something in my locker, I would hide things. Uh, even then when I was at the gym, I would always be afraid that those people who were out to get me would poison my water bottle. So I was always watching my water bottle to make sure nobody went near it, to make sure I didn't leave it alone. If I did leave it alone uh, and then I came back to it, I, I wouldn't drink out of it because I was afraid, you know, someone had put something in it and it was poisoned and so I couldn't drink out of it now. There's so many more, anything to do with money, anything of value. I was always convinced that people were watching me, people were out to get me. Uh, it would happen with things online too. But you can also see how, I mean, with many mental illnesses, uh, paranoia is such a key component, even when we look at something like social anxiety. Such a key component of social anxiety is that belief that people are thinking about what you're doing. That those other people are judging you, they're watching you, they're thinking bad things about you, they're out to get you. Thing though that I really didn't recognize as irrational or unreasonable, I completely believed uh, there were people watching me. So even when I started to cut out the compulsions while doing therapy, I was cutting out the compulsion because I knew the compulsion was part of the mental illness, but I still believed people were watching me. That was actually not something I recognized as unusual until much later after I was done therapy. And then one day I remember I was walking into my living room, there was a big glass uh, door and window off to the side and I realized as I was walking in, I was just thinking about how I was going to change how I was walking because of the people watching me. And I just remember suddenly thinking, oh, they're actually actually isn't anybody out there watching me and that was the first time that I really noticed that I was constantly throughout my life reacting to this fear that people were watching. The compulsions that surround paranoia are a useful set of compulsions to tackle because often they're one of the ways that we practice mental illness and practice anxiety throughout our lives. How we pull out our wallet, how we close our door, how we go to work, where we eat lunch and so on. And we're just constantly aware of it. Just practicing reacting to uncertainty and telling our brains, I want you to think about this uncertainty more. And then your brain very helpfully and very logically will find more and more ways that people could be watching you, more and more ways that people could attack you 
and hurt you, it's gonna end up giving you these intrusive thoughts more and more, and they're going to get increasingly distressing. Getting over these compulsions was about doing two things that might seem a bit contradictory. So the one was about starting to recognize that people weren't actually watching me. That was just a thing my brain thought. That's that piece of cognitive diffusion, just recognizing, oh, my brain is doing that thing again where it thinks we're being watched. It was a bit like recognizing that I had this really paranoid dog with me all the time. And so at any little sound, it would just bark at me. Every little sound it interpreted as, oh no, we're about to be attacked by tigers. And it would just start barking. So I start to recognize, okay, my brain barks. That's what it does. The second component was about dealing with the fact that from years of practicing reacting to these fears, I'd really drilled it into my brain that it's going to be, it's terrible if people are watching me, all these people are out to get me, horrible things are going to happen, and all those things are terrible and my life will be over. So I needed to show my brain that I wasn't afraid of those things anymore. I needed to show my brain that it was wrong. Uh, and I needed to take the fear out of those beliefs and really rewrite them. So here's an example. If I left my water bottle at the gym, in the past I wouldn't let it out of my sight. I'd always be watching it because I was sure somebody was going to try to poison it. Uh, definitely if I let it out of my sight, when I came back I would not drink out of it. So getting over this, on one hand I recognize, okay, my brain has these thoughts that somebody is out to get me and they're poisoning my water bottle at the gym. But I also want to get over that fear. So what I do is then I would leave the water bottle somewhere, go somewhere else to exercise, come back to get the water bottle. And then when I would come back, my brain would start to think, oh no, like someone must have poisoned it. Uh, and so instead of trying to push that thought away or doing some compulsion with the cup, I would agree with it. I'd say, yes, like, well, I left this here. Somebody did put some poison in here. And it's actually like really horrible poison. Like when I drink this, it is going to melt my organs, but it's also going to take a long time to start working. So I won't even notice if it's poison or not until like later tonight when I just collapse in excruciating pain and my life is going to be over and all of the things I wanted to do won't happen. Everything is going to end here uh, with this sip uh, from my water bottle that I'm about to take. But I really value exercising and it's really important to stay hydrated. So I'm going to take this drink right now. And you know, today, if today is the last day, then that's fine. I'm going to act according to my values. I'm gonna enjoy this workout because it's the last workout I'm ever gonna have on this planet. So those are the two techniques that really helped me with both getting over the compulsions I had related to paranoia, but also the paranoia itself. Like with anything, it's really the compulsions that fuel the paranoia. The more you react to paranoia to try to control it, the more paranoia, the more anxiety, and the more uncertainty you're choosing to experience. So I would tell you a story, so this is a bit of a funny story, a personal story about how one day uh, in the summer I was helping a friend of mine move, and I was gonna take a bunch of their boxes of books to my place. And so we're, I was at my friend's place, they had another friend there who was gonna help us move, and I called a taxi to come and pick us up. I gave my address to the taxi, I went to get my shoes in the hallway and come back for the books, and when I came back into the room, the friend looked at me and said, do you ever iron with your shirt off? And I, I was kind of, well of course I iron with my shirt off, because if I had a shirt, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be ironing it. And then this other friend says, oh, you know what? My cousin, she lives across from you and she watches you iron with your shirt off and she talks about it with all of her friends. Strange girl across the way. People are always watching us. Whether it's some girl across from your apartment or it's Dick Cheney reading your emails or it's the other people on the bus watching you or it's your colleagues at work watching you, it's somebody watching you on CCTV as you go shopping any number of different ways throughout our lives, we are being watched. What's important here is that being watched or being paranoid doesn't control your life. What's important is that you're in charge of your life and you're able to do the healthy things that you value and that the fear of being watched doesn't become the thing that controls your life, that doesn't dictate your actions. Because then you're just living in reaction to that fear that is going to make you miserable, that is going to limit you. Personally, it's been incredibly beneficial for me to get over my paranoia and all of that anxiety I had about being watched and figure out how to do the things I wanna do aligned with my values, while at the same time being realistic about the world and the context that I live in. I hope you find the same freedom to let your values guide your actions to doing the things that make you healthy and happy and that your actions aren't just a reaction 
to fears about real or imaginary people watching you. 